Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to test this mic. It's all right. Thank you for getting your steps up and coming over to this building for my presentation. Uh, my name is Belinda Bria. I'm the Student Partnerships Coordinator at the University of the Sunshine Coast. Really excited to be here to present this case study today. Um, so I think we're running about 10 minutes behind schedule. So I'm going to see how I go with the presentation um, and hopefully we can still have some time for some questions at the end. Welcome to everyone in the room and welcome to our Zoom attendees. Hopefully you can hear me all good. Um, my colleague Ciara is also on Zoom. So if there's any online participants who have any questions, um, Ciara will be there to answer questions as well. There we go. All right, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land on which we study, we walk and we live. The cubby cubby, gubby gubby people from the land where I've come from on the Sunshine Coast and the land of the Gadigal people where we meet today. I am inspired by the strength and insurance of the world's oldest living culture. We are privileged to be on the lands of learning today and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging recognizing their continued connection to lands, waters, and communities. So in today's presentation, I'm gonna tell you all about our student volunteer program, which is coordinated through what we call the Students as Partners program at UniSC. I'm gonna give you an overview of the onboarding, the training, and the support that we provide for our student representatives through this program, and the recognition and reward um, that we have embedded throughout the program. I'm going to look at some of the um, research of the impact of what we're seeing of students benefiting from the success of the program and also some areas of improvement and growth um, that I'd like to discuss with you today and hopefully um, learn from you throughout this symposium as well. So a little bit about us at the University of the Sunshine Coast. So we are spread across five campuses up in Queensland. We're quite a small regional university. We have just over 17,000 students. We have 10% international um, students across our campuses. And you can see our student age groups are about 60% of over 20. So we have majority of mature age students and we have 40% um, students who are first in family across our campuses. So our volunteer program is centrally coordinated through the careers and employability office. So I'm within the students as partners team within the careers and employability office. And it provides opportunities for students to participate in a range of co-curricular activities that complement their academic studies. So the program's for undergraduate and postgrad coursework students, and it's an optional program that they can register for at any stage throughout their studies. And students select a role that they'd like to select, that they'd like to opt into when they sign up for the program. So those three roles are the badges at the bottom of the screen there. So students can sign up to be student volunteers that mainly help us um, at delivering events at orientation, campus activations, and things like Connect Week. And then we have our student representatives, and that's what my presentation is going to focus on today. And they sit on our student senate in one of our multiple rec groups that I'll explain a little bit more in the next slide. And then we have our peer leaders, which provide peer-to-peer -peer academic support, and they work closely with our student success team, our learning advisors, once they're in their second year of study, to provide um, learning support to their peers. So the program's really flexible. Students can opt in at any stage. They can opt out. There's no minimum requirements, and the students decide um, at what level they'd like to engage with the program. Their volunteering efforts are recognised through the Student Leadership Award, which is our co-curricular recognition program. And again, that's optional. So not all of the students in the volunteer program um, opt into the Leadership Award, but um, they're encouraged to and have the opportunity to. So my presentation is going to focus on the student, represent, student representative um, training and support. So this is our student governance framework at the University of Sunshine Coast. So we have student-led groups for each of our schools, which is the bottom there that you can see on tier one. There are two co-chairs for each of the groups that you see on the screen. 
and the co-chairs of all of our school groups make up our learning and teaching student representative council. So on tier two, you can see we have groups that represent um, all of our students, including different campuses, Indigenous students, international, post-grad, um, our guild and our union has two seats on the Senate as well, and um, disability inclusion student group as well. So that's the composition that makes up our Senate, which is the group at the top. And our Senate is co-chaired by our two democratically elected student members on council, which is the highest level of governance at the university. So all of the students who opt in to become student representatives as part of that framework go through a centrally um, coordinated program that is managed on Student Hub. So it's a workflow that steps them through the training and onboarding once they come into the program. So there's a series of self-paced, accessible online and, and, and in-person um, offerings to help them get prepared for their role. So once they complete their registration, they're able to then tell us which role they're going to opt into. So like I mentioned before, the volunteer, the leader or the student representative. And then they complete some essential online modules. They book into a rep induction with us and they can manage their registration by opting in and out um, of different roles at any stage. So that was the previous slide was the student view. And then in the back end, we have reports set up uh, for staff members to be able to track how students are progressing through their training, providing any follow-up um, or support they may need to progress through to opt into their role. So the first thing they do is the what we call the essential training. So this is across all of the roles. So they complete those five online modules, workplace health and safety um, for volunteers, which is quite standard across all universities, an overview of what their role entails um, in detail and different services to be aware of how to um, refer others to services such as student success, learning, wellbeing, et cetera. We have a module for leadership fundamentals, effective communication, um, as well as diversity and inclusion. So these online modules are quite brief. We find they take students around 20 minutes to complete and they are just meant as an introduction, but then we have additional um, optional extensions of those modules throughout the program. Once they've done the online modules, they then book into a workshop with us where we hold it either in person twice a year. So one big one a semester where we really like to get students together in a room, but because we're multi-campus, we hold it online throughout the semester as well. So then we just um, unpack the student leadership award requirements, um, unpack all of the content of those five modules in case studies. So we go through some scenarios that come up that will likely come up in their role as student volunteers, reps or leaders to help them feel um, better prepared for their role to gain a deeper understanding of how they can best contribute and what they want to get out of the program. If they have signed up as a student representative, they then have additional specialist um, training. So we have a student representative handbook that they can print out or they can come into the office to get a copy and they can also connect via a Microsoft Teams account. So we have a Teams for the SAP community, and then we have Teams set up for each of the student representative groups so they can um, connect with each other at any stage throughout the program. We provide um, introduction to meeting essentials, so things like what's an agenda, um, what's minutes, why we use them, um, and all of that operational details and we have a module on um, some tips for conflict resolution um, and positive and collaborative communication between peers and with staff. So similar to the previous module, they then book into um, an induction session with us where we unpack all of that content through case studies. And we also explain further about the governance framework, how all the groups work together and in that session, we go through a feedback workflow. So what we find from student representatives is there's lots of different layers of feedback and they often don't know 
schools you go to for what? Because universities are um, complex beings. So we have a bit of a um, framework and a workflow that steps them through that. And then we encourage them to always reach out to us if they need any help to navigate that. So in addition to the additional, the initial onboarding and training that they do, we then try to connect them um, via online community. So I mentioned we have uh, the team set up for them, which is the Students as Partners community team. We have teams for each of their rep groups. We have a monthly newsletter that goes out um, that just highlights all of the upcoming opportunities that they can opt into. And then that is the, um, the staff-led communication to the students, but then we also have student-led communication from our representatives. So we do quarterly updates from our co-chairs that go out in our all student newsletters. And we have meet and eat events, which are like pop-up activations for our reps to connect with their peers throughout the semester. So if you came to the symposium last year, you might remember we did a presentation on um, the meet and eat events. And the format of those is basically free food and fun activity. Um, like popcorn and painting, for example. And that's an opportunity for reps just to speak to their peers in a formal way to collect feedback um, other than sending surveys. So just looking at alternate ways not to send more emails and send more surveys because we know students get enough of those. So reward and recognition is also a really important component of our program, recognizing this is a volunteer program. So there's a number of different ways that we acknowledge students' contribution through the program. So upon registration, they receive like a, what we call a SAP welcome pack, just like a volunteer shirt, um, a lanyard and some specific pins depending on the different roles that they've opted into. And we hold regular appreciation events throughout the year. So for example, during National Student Volunteer Week, we had gratitude gatherings with live music and free music, no, sorry, live music, free food across all of our campuses. And just last week, we held our annual Student Volunteer Awards where students as well as peers and staff have the opportunity to nominate students and they're formally recognised with a certificate um, at a formal awards event on campus. So sorry if I'm going too fast here. I'm just mindful of time. I'm good. So the overarching recognition um, program that all of the students are recognised through is our Student Leadership Award Program. So this is our co-curricular recognition program. So I've spoken through kind of the, the registration and the onboarding process, the induction and the training workshops. So after that, the first thing we ask students to do is to set some goals for themselves about why they're getting involved in the program and what they'd like to get out of it and do a little bit of a skills audit of how confident they're feeling in applying our graduate skills and attributes um, in the university setting. So they can, they can either be in first year or in final year when they get involved in that. And then we step them through different milestones as they gain points um, through the co-curricular recognition program. So the Leadership Award program is a point system. So we have like a points matrix on our student portal that has suggestions of all the activities that students can get involved in. So for example, if they were volunteering for a two hour event support, it would be like 10 points. If they did a whole day, it would be 30. If they were doing a learning enrichment activity, depending on the time, there's different points attached um, to different activities. So as they gain those points and they get involved in different activities, they continue to complete those reflections at 200 points, 500 points, and then 1,000 prior to graduation. So if they are at that 1,000 points, they then book into a careers advisor, a one-on-one -on -one appointment to be able to confidently communicate what the Student Leadership Award means um, to an employer in a coaching session. They submit their CV to the careers team as well for some personalised feedback. And then the Student Leadership Award is presented upon graduation. 
So the award is a certificate, but it's also complemented by a one page summary of a letter that is signed by um, our vice chancellor. And the award is read out as they walk along the stage. It's printed in their graduation booklet. It's also printed on their AHANCS statement as well. So there are five programs as part of the Student Leadership Award category, sorry, that students get involved in. So not only the voluntary contributions through the Students as Partners program, but wider than that, they can get recognition for work experience and industry connections, any professional development and learning enrichment activities, such as our students that are attending today's conference, um, research and development activities and entrepreneurship and innovation. So it's designed to be more holistic, looking at um, their employability and with a focus on reflection to be able to confidently communicate their enhanced skills to employers and or any connections throughout their studies. So I mentioned it's a points-based system. So the benefit of this program is that it is centrally coordinated through a workflow process. So staff members and students are easily guided through um, the points system. So for internal opportunities, for example, if there are workshops offered across our student success team, our careers team, or our learning advisors or wellbeing, we use labels in the student hub that are attached to points. So once students attend an event, those points are automatically assigned to their workflow. So we see that as a really big benefit that there's not an additional barrier for students to have to claim those points. Some come in in their second year and sign up for the program and see they've actually already got 200 points from all the activities that they've been doing. And for the external opportunities within community engagement, um, students just tell us what they did by uploading a verification document. And there's an automated system in the background that if the document's not verified, um, if a document is not available, then an automated email goes to a contact um, where they can click yes or no to verify those points. So this is a student view of how students um, opt through the workflow so they can see their points um, really easily at any stage of their student journey. They can claim the points at the top via that form and then they can drop down each of those five categories that I spoke to and see what they've done under each category. So that also helps them to be able to at the end of their student journey, reflect back and think, oh, what did I do and what experiences I wanna translate and make sure they're really clear on my CV or my resume. So in addition um, to finding their own activities through those categories, this is the reflections that we ask them to do through those key milestones. So, Upon entry at the 200 points, the 500 points, and then the 1,000 points, we just use a Likert scale um, for them to indicate how confident they are at um, applying these skills or attributes through their personal, academic, um, and professional life. So the skills and attributes that we use are our central um, university-wide skills and attributes that are also aligned to the academic studies, so students should feel quite confident in knowing how they can apply that within the curriculum and outside of the curriculum as well. So we've been able to, through these reflections, have a look at how students' confidence have increased through the application of these skills and attributes through their student experience. So we were able to look at that at this as a research project just earlier this year. So it's been really interesting for us to be able to have a look at overall how their confidence in their application of these skills has increased from when they started to when they finished, but quite interesting how um, many of the times in between their confidence kind of goes down as they get more of awareness of what it means to apply that skill or that attribute. And it also gives us the opportunity to target specific professional development or training offerings where we're seeing that um, students don't know how to apply this skill or they need additional support or opportunities. 
We're also able to look at the students who have participated in the Leadership Award and how their student success um, data is significantly more successful than those who don't participate in the program. Now, this definition, I'm only looking at um, academic student success as my definition. And we didn't have ethics approval to share any of the open-ended sorry, questions via the reflections. But what we really see in the reflections is the real value of the experiences that they get is through networking, connections, um, friendships, and a sense of belonging. So that wider piece of things that are a little bit harder to measure. So um, this definition just looks at their academic success, which is helpful for our funding applications. But when we speak to students about how they've transformed through the program, through interviews and through reflections, we really find, yeah, that sense of belonging piece um, is the big one. All right, so what's next for us? Um, there's actually a long list of what's next and of how we'd like to further um, innovate and improve our program. But we really want to use those data insights that we've looked at this year through that reflection data and the student success data to further customize the training offerings that are available through student representatives. And we want to continue to tailor our training programs to our student representatives, specifically around um, some of the ambiguous aspects aspects of student representation without having too much structure and with still giving them um, flexibility to have an innovative approach of what student representative looks like for them. Uh, we've had on the list for a while to look at digital badging. So we've got that all ready to go. We just need to get the systems um, solution in the background ready to incorporate recognition throughout their program, throughout those um, five categories that I spoke about. And we'd like to look at a more um, structured award mentorship of when students come into the program, how they're able to connect with others as well. But I'm also really interested in hearing the rest of the case studies for today's session. So I'm sure there's lots of learnings that we can apply to our program as well. Don't know how I've gone for time. But thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you to my colleague, Ciara, for contributing to this presentation. So Ciara is on Zoom if anyone has any online questions and happy to take any questions in the room as well. Thank you. Any questions? I'll just repeat it back for the Zoom people. Yeah, who wants to grab his name in the front? Um, not many. Um, yeah, we have 1.5 professional staff members, including me. And then we have about 1.2 casual students that support the um, student representative side. So we also within the team support the admin functions of all those Senate groups, including, um, yeah, onboarding them, training them. And so what's that? Maybe over three, so three. Fighting for more, but yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yes, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I'll just repeat that back for people on Zoom. So the question was just around how we're engaging the quieter voices or those who are um, less likely to opt into these extracurricular activities who are probably struggling just to meet 
their full-time work and their study and all their other life commitments. Um, so in terms of student representation, we do do some targeted, um, you know, recruitment campaigns to certain cohorts, um, which have some success, but we try to have a focus on the reps who are opting into the group having different ways to connect with their peers to gather feedback, acknowledging that, like, not everyone has capacity to opt into these programs. Um, and, yeah, so just looking at different avenues of feedback, so making sure, you know, there's activations on campus, like there's different avenues where people can make sure their voice is heard in different ways without the expectation of sitting on a committee um, and that kind of thing. So I'd say, yeah, that's our approach at the moment. And we're looking at um, bigger university-wide approaches next year, like a student voice um, forum or like more visible yeah, activations on campus through, through conversation rather than, yeah, formal surveys or opting into these types of programs.